components that are also fractions. So up until this point, we've been dealing with fractions or sorry, exponents, but it was like always a positive exponent, like 3 to the power of 3 or 3 to the power of 2 or 3 to the power of 1. All things that we know. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate these things just to see what they look like. Evaluate means put in your calculus. So if you see that word, it means like change that into an actual number. Figure out what the decimal is. So we do three cubed, we know that. If we do three to the power of two, we know that. If we do three to the power of one, we know that three. And what does power to the zero do again? It's equal to one. So anything to the power of zero is always equal to one. All right, now we get into these negative exponents, and these things are tricky. So in your calculator, if you were to put in three to the power of negative one, you would get 0 0.333 repeated. Now, we don't like decimals like that, right? We always change this into fractions. Yeah, so if you go math, frac, this thing changes into 1 over 3. Now, if you do 3 to the power of negative 2 in your calculator, you would get 0 0.111 repeated. But again, we don't like that. So instead, we would go math, frac, and we would change that thing to be 1 over 9. All right, let's try evaluating for our 6s as well. And we're going to see if we notice some tricks. So 6 to the power of 3. So we go 6 squared. If we go 6 to the power of 1, just 6. What's anything to the power of 0? 1. All right, now we're into our negative exponents again. So if we put that into our calculator, we get a bad decimal. Anybody know what the decimal is? 1.6. Zero point one six 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 six. Yeah. Yeah. Point one six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought you said one point seven. Like that. And we don't like those decimals, right? So we go math, frac, and this thing would change to be one over six. Now, if you did. 6 to the power of negative 2 in your calculator, you're going to get another weird decimal. It's going to be 0 0.0277. 0 0.0277. Yeah. 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 Again, we don't like those decimals, so we go math, fraction. This thing is 1 over 36. Now, we're going to look at these negative exponents to see if we notice any sort of trend. Does anybody notice anything? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same as what you had before. It's just now it's divided by, right? Like it's 1 divided by that number. So if you look at these things right here, 3 to the power of 1 was 3. 3 to the power of negative 1 was just 1 over 3. Look right here. 3 squared was 9. 3 to the power of negative 2 was 1 over 9. Same thing worked over here with the 6s. 6 to the power of 1, 6 to the power of negative 1. A 6 or 1 over 6. If you look at your 6 squared, that was 36. 6 to the negative 2 was 1 over 36. So what we're noticing here is actually one of our math laws. It's one of our exponent laws. It's your negative exponent law. And what it's telling you is that when you have a negative exponent, you could rewrite it as a positive exponent by putting it on the opposite side of the fraction.
This is the same thing as saying 1 over 3 to the power of 1. This is the same thing as saying 1 over 3 to the power of 2. Like these are the same thing. So you notice that to get rid of a negative exponent, all that's happening is it's moving to the bottom of a fraction. We do a lot of practice with this. But this right here is like your formula for your negative exponent. So it's when you have something with a negative exponent, you could rewrite it as something with a positive exponent, but that something had to move to the bottom of a fraction. It works the opposite way too. So if you had a negative exponent and you are on the bottom of a fraction, you can make it a positive exponent by moving it to the top of a fraction. Now these things can get pretty complex pretty quick. And you'll notice in your practice book like there's some hard questions in there. So you're going to have to learn different tricks. The first thing is when you get a question like we have here in example 1a, don't try dealing with the negative exponent until you've simplified everything you can simplify. So what I want you to do is your very first step is try to combine these into one thing. So what's our rule when we have multiplication? We're going to do the exponents. We add the exponents. So if we want to combine these two, we would have to add the exponents. So negative 4 plus negative 3 would give me b to the power of negative 7. So this first step is combine things you can combine, like that. Your second step is now, okay, deal with that negative exponent. Because in math, we don't allow negative exponents. You have to write things as positive exponents. So if we want to change this thing to have a positive exponent, we know that it has to be 1 divided by, and now it's a positive exponent because it moved to the bottom of a fraction. So to make that exponent positive, it had to move to the bottom of a fraction. All right, we look at number two. It says 6x squared divided by 2x7. You might also want to just rewrite this. That's, that means the same thing. Right? So if you don't like the way it was written, you can always rewrite questions into a format you enjoy. Your first step is to bring anything together that you can. Well, my coefficients can go together. 6 divided by 2 is 3. What was our exponent law for division? You subtract, yeah. So you need to go 2 minus 7. And that gives you x to the negative 5. Now remember, we don't like negative exponents. So we need to somehow change this thing to be positive. If we want to change it to be positive, it needs to go to the bottom of a fraction. This is the, the 3. Does the 3 need to move to the bottom of a fraction? No. No, it does not. Because its exponent is not negative 5. The 3 is not a part of that exponent. So when we rewrite this thing, the 3 is going to be the top of the fraction. Because we didn't want to move the 3. And the x to the negative 5, it's going to go to the bottom of a fraction. So that would be your final answer. It's important to recognize what has a negative exponent and what doesn't have a negative exponent. The x had a negative exponent. The 3 did not have a negative exponent. So the 3 stayed, the x moved. And anytime your x moves, that's a good thing. Right? Someone? Yeah, and then you just leave it like that. That's your answer. You're good. Okay, if we look at C, remember we're going to try to simplify before we deal with our negatives. So, my coefficients can go together. My 8 divided by 4 can combine to be 2. 
my a to the power of negative 5 and my b to the power of negative 3. Can I combine those two things? No, because they're different bases, right? Different letters can't be combined. So you still just have a to the power of negative 5, b to the power of negative 3. So we did all the simplifying we could do. Now our goal is to get rid of any negative exponents. What all has a negative exponent in this question? The A has a negative exponent. The B has a negative exponent. The 2 does not. So the 2 is going to stay in the same spot. The B is going to have to move to the top. Right, so it's going to go to the opposite side of the fraction. So now it's b to the power of 3 divided by a to the power of 5. So all you're doing is you're moving things. If it's got a negative exponent, it goes to the other side of the fraction. And that would be your final answer. So when you move it to like from bottom to top, it just... Yep, it's the exact same as going from top to bottom. All right, we're looking at these. So now we've got fractions inside of brackets with a negative exponent. So there's a lot to do here. The first thing I always want you to do is follow the idea of bed mass. And bed mass would tell you do anything inside the brackets first. So if you can simplify anything inside the brackets, do that. Now, can we combine the C and the D in there? No, we can't. So there's nothing you can do in there. But in the ideal world, that's what you would do. You would mess around with those first. Now, the second thing, I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick. So if you have a negative exponent outside the brackets like we have here, what happens is everything on the top goes to the bottom, and everything on the bottom goes to the top. So this thing changes to be d over c, all to the power of positive 3 now. That's how we get rid of our negative exponents when you're on the outside of brackets. Everything on the top goes to the bottom. Everything on the bottom goes to the top. Now, what was our rule when we had an exponent outside the, or sorry, yeah, an exponent outside the brackets? Sorry. Yeah, we had to distribute it to both things. And when we distribute it, you multiply the exponents together. So this becomes d to the power of is So that 3 has to come into both things, so it becomes d to the power of 3 and c to the power of 3. Okay, I'm going to try that again. So the second question, we look at this. We look inside the brackets. We try to simplify inside the brackets, but there's nothing that can be simplified. The next thing we do is we notice that outside of our brackets, we have that negative exponent, and that's not good for us. So how can we get rid of that negative really easily? Just switch everything inside the brackets. So now it's 4 over x to the power of 3. Now what do I do with that 3? You distribute it to the other exponents. So this thing becomes 4 to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 3. Okay. I'll let you try this one on your own. So give it a shot. See if you can simplify that thing.
So my first step was I flipped everything inside the bracket. That got rid of my negative on my negative exponent. And then I distributed the 3 in. When you distribute that 3 in, you multiply the exponents together. So that's why I have 12 and 6. Because 4 times 3 is 12, and 2 times 3 is 6. So you multiply the exponents together. All right, last one. This one's a little bit trickier. Your first step is going to be to simplify anything on the inside that you can. You could do this question a whole bunch of different ways. What I would do is I would flip these on the inside to get rid of the negatives on the inside of the brackets first. So I'm going to flip it to become b to the power of 5 over a to the power of 2. But it's all still to the power of negative 4. So you see on the inside, I only change those around to get rid of the inside negative exponents. The outside negative exponent is still there. Now I can deal with the outside negative exponent. And what's that thing going to do to me? It's going to flip it all again, right? So now it's going to be a squared divided by b to the power of 5 to the power of 4. Now the outside negative exponent is also gone. So just reviewing what we did there. I changed the a squared to the bottom to get rid of that negative exponent. And I go to the b to the negative 5 to the top to get rid of that negative exponent. Then I had to flip everything again because I had a negative exponent on the outside of the brackets. So what do I have to do with that 4? Distribute it in. That means you multiply. So you have a to the power of 8 divided by b to the power of 2. Any questions on any of those examples we did on this page? All right. Fraction exponent. So we've dealt with positive exponents, we've dealt with negative exponents, but you'll notice that those have always been integers. Right? There's been no decimals, there's been no fractions. So now we're going to start looking at fraction exponents. Before we do that, we're going to try some things on our calculator. We're going to just type in our calculator the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Put that in and you get it's equal to 3.34. Now I'm going to put my calculator 5 to the power of 1 half times 5 to the power of 1 half. And I'm going to notice that that is equal to 3.34. That's not right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it would be the exact same, but the number is wrong. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is not 3.4, it's 5. And this is 5. That's why I was like, something's wrong. I typed in my calculator. That's much better. <laughs> but you're right, it should be the same. And the reason it should be the same is that you're going to learn a little rule here. If the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 equals 5, and then 5 to the power of 1 half times 5 to the power of 1 half equals 5. What do you think you know about the square root of 5? And 5 to the power of 1 half. It's the same thing. So that means root 5 equals 5 to the power of 1 half. They must be the same thing. So we're going to do something like, again, but now we're going to do a little bit bigger one. So we're going to say... 5 or the cube root and 2 to the power of 1 over 3. So if you put the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2 in your calculator, you should get that, that thing is equal to 2. If you put 
2 to the power of 1 third times 2 to the power of 1 third times 2 to the power of 1 third in your calculator, you should also get 2. So what do you think we can conclude from that one? They're the same. The cube root of 2 equals 2 to the power of 1 over 3. Now, the reason that we did this is it's going to show us something. In the first question, what's your index? So the index is the little number that goes right here. That number is 2. What's the number on the bottom of your fraction on your exponent? Also 2. Come down here to this one. What's your index on that radical? 3. What's the bottom of your fraction on your exponent? Also 3. That's not a coincidence. So that's going to be our fraction exponent law. Our fraction exponent law tells us that the index becomes the bottom of a fraction. Or the bottom of a fraction becomes the index, depending on which way you want to go. Here, you have to times the same as the index. I mean, when you times it by itself, like, to, like, the cube root of 2. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I see what you're saying. But we, yeah, we're just in this. You would add it. You'd add all those up. But, yeah, no, we're just in this. I see what you're saying. All we're trying to get out of this is that your index is the bottom of your fraction when you have an exponent, and vice versa. The bottom of your fraction is your index. They've written out the rule here. It kind of looks confusing. It also looks kind of dull on your paper, by the looks of it. But it's just not it's very well. The top rule is the one we just talked about. The bottom rule is when you have negative fraction exponents. So you'll notice when you have negative fraction exponents, they have to put it underneath a fraction, and then they change it into a radical. We do a bunch of practice with these because these are confusing. So we look at example 1a. It says write the following using an equivalent radical. So they want you to write this thing as a radical. What do we know about the bottom number of your fraction? It's the index. So that means I must have a cube root. Now everything else, so the r to the power of 1, that just stays underneath the root sign. And we don't usually write to the power of 1. But you have to imagine that there is a little power of 1 there. I'm right, going to try it again on b. So if you look at b, do you want to change that thing to a radical? What does the bottom number become? Bottom number becomes the index, so I'm going to have a 7 root. The s to the power of 4, what happens to it? It stays underneath the root. So the index is the bottom, the bottom is the index, it goes both ways. a little bit harder because it's a negative fraction. The first thing you want to do is deal with the negative <coughs> part. And how do we deal with negative exponents? It flips it. Now, be careful. It doesn't flip the exponent. It flips the entire thing. So it becomes 1 over t to the power of 1 sixth. Some people will flip the exponent because they're like, well, there's a negative exponent, you have to flip it. The exponent stays the same, it's still 1 over 6. But the entire thing had to become the bottom of a fraction. Now, we want to convert that into a radical. So if you're looking just at the bottom, we need to convert that part into radical form. So it's going to become 1 divided by what root am I, am I going to use? Six. I should have the six here, Olivia. 
Because it's the bottom, exactly. So we're going to have a 6 through of T. That would be your final answer. Those negative fraction exponents are probably the hardest things you guys run into. Yep. All right, try D on your own. So give it a shot. It's very similar to C. So give it a shot. I'll write the both steps on the board. So my first step was I took that b e to the power of negative 3 over 2, and I moved it to the bottom. That got rid of the negative for me. Now I need to get rid of the fraction. So to get rid of the fraction, I took the 2, and I turned it into an index. Now I have the square root of b to the power of 3. All right, some tricky ones coming up. I'm going to move my screen up so we can actually see what I'm doing. E. We have a fraction exponent. We know we need to change that to a radical because we don't leave things as fraction exponents. The question here is what has a fraction exponent? The t does. Does the 5? No. The 5 is not a part of that exponent. So when you go to change this thing, the 5 is still out front. And then it's the fourth root of t to the power of 3. The 5 was not a part of that fraction exponent, so the 5 does not go underneath that root sign. It's a coefficient that stays out front. Now if you look at f, f is different because now they put brackets around. By putting brackets around, they're saying the 3 to the Divide by 4, that is part of 5. So now the 5 does have to go underneath the roots. So when we do that, I would make it look like this. I go 4th root, bracket, 5t, bracket, q. Like that. So you notice that the bottom became the index. Everything else stayed the same. The 5t to the power of 3 is still sitting there. This would not be the right answer on a test. Anybody want to guess why? Yeah, give it a shot. Because what, sorry? It's not simplified all the way. How could we simplify it further, Jerry? Yeah, you can cube both of these things. So remember that 3 now needs to come into the brackets. So we get 4th root. 125, because that's what 5 to the power of 3 is, and then t to the power of 3. That would be your answer. All right, g, the hardest one. I have a negative exponent. Am I allowed to have negative exponents? No, so how do we get rid of negative exponents? The whole thing flips. So this whole thing becomes 1 divided by bracket negative z. Notice that the z is still negative. Its fraction is going to be positive, but the actual negative z stays negative. So just the exponent change from negative to positive. All right, now what do I want to do? Close. Yeah, Denny, go ahead. Gorgeous. We need to change this bottom to a radical. To do that, we make the 3 the index. So this thing's going to become 1 over 
the cube root, right, the three decaying index, negative z to the power of five. We don't have to flip it again because it's negative z. That's okay. You're not allowed negative exponents. The negative letters and numbers like this, negative bases, that's okay. The exponent can't be negative. You could. That's a good question. So she's saying, could that 5 come into the brackets? And it definitely could. It won't make any sort of difference. It'll still just be negative z to the power of 5. But you could do that later. You're right. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to convert these things and then try to solve them without actually using our calculator. Because sometimes these things get messy in our calculator. I mean, you saw me do it right here in front of class. I tried to put in my calculator and I still screwed it up. So, sometimes it's easier to just do this on your own. So, let's convert that into a radical. So, we've got 25 to the power of 3 over 2. I want you to change that into a radical. So, go ahead and change it into a radical. Okay, I converted that into a radical. The 2 became the index. The 3 stayed where it was. Now, I can solve this thing in my head. And the way I'm going to solve it in my head is I look at the square root of 25 to the power of 3, and I need to know something. And the thing that I know is that it doesn't matter if you do to the power of 3 first or if you do the square root first. It'll still work out the same. Do I know what the square root of 25 is? It's just 5. So that means this thing is actually 5 to the power of 3. So we actually used up that square root. Now, what is 5 to the power of 3 equal to? So 125 is your answer. It doesn't matter the order that you do it in. So if you see a square root of a number that you know the square root of, you can do that first. Let's do it again here. So this thing was changed to be the cube root of negative 8 squared. Do I know what the cube root of negative 8 would be? You might not. That might be a trickier one. But if you put in your calculator, it's negative 2. So the cube root of negative 8, if you put that in your calculator, is negative 2. Negative 2 squared. I want everybody to put negative 2 squared in their calculator. Everybody. So everyone's going to put negative 2 squared in their calculator. So, everyone put it in their calculator? How many people got negative 4 on their calculator? How many people got positive 4 on their calculator? Yeah, you'll see that it's split. In fact, there's more people who said negative 4. Now, if we think about this for a second. Mine not real. This is not real? Yeah, that's even more impressive. Thank you. What do you need the square root? You need the square root. I was like, how did that happen? So, if we think about this, negative 2 squared. If we have a negative times a negative, we're definitely going to get a positive. positive. So this is your right answer. Look how many people in the room got negative 4, though, when I asked you. The reason you got negative 4 is you didn't put brackets in your calculator. When you put something in your calculator that's negative, you need to go bracket negative 2 bracket squared. And what you're telling your calculator is, I want negative 2 squared. If you don't put the brackets, what your calculator thinks is you want to do 2 squared times negative. 
and it screws it up for you. So make sure you put brackets around your negatives. All right, C. Try to convert it on your own. So convert it into radical form, and then see if you can even solve it on your own. tricky one. That got rid of the negative exponent, so that's why I did that first. The second thing I did was I changed that fraction exponent now into a radical. The thing I did after that was the fourth root of 16, and you might have didn't had to do that in your calculator. The fourth root of 16 is just 2. So the fourth root of 16 became 2, that left me with 1 divided by 2 to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. That's 1 over 8. That's a lot. All right, if you're looking at D, yeah. Four through on your calculator, you have to go math, and then it'll be the one with the X. So the fifth option, it's the X root. Yeah, you'd have to use that one. And depending on your calculator, you might have to type the 4 first, and then go math, and then click that button. Right, if we're looking at E, that one's kind of tricky. We'd have that square, sorry, that one half exponent on the outside. There's different ways you could deal with it. So you could right away try to convert that thing into one half of all that in there. Another trick we could do, and as you guys get better at math, you'll see different tricks can pop up. That one half, how can it come inside the brackets? Distributes in, correct? When you distribute it, what do you have to do to those exponents? You have to multiply them. So if you go 2 times 1 half, it's just 3. If you do 4 squared, so the square times 1 half, you get just 4. So that 1 half basically cancelled out those exponents. 3 times 4 is, yeah, 12. To get to the point where you can see tricks like that in math, it can take a lot of practice. That's why your practice book has so many questions in it. So that you have the opportunity to get to that point. Now, could you have changed that into a radical and then done stuff with the radicals? You definitely could have, but it probably would have been more work, right? Three more pages. We're going to go the opposite direction now. I'm going to go a little quicker. So now, they want you to change these things so that they're no longer radicals. Instead, they're fraction exponents. If you want to change this thing from a radical to a fraction exponent, your index becomes the bottom of the fraction. So what was your index right here? Two. Two. That means I need x to the power of 1 divided by 2. The index became the bottom. Notice that 1 is kind of a sneaky little invisible 1. It was there, they just don't write it. So when we look at the second question, where's my index going to go? Bottom of the fraction. So it's going to become 2 divided by 3. The 3 became the bottom. The 2 stayed on the top. Okay, I just want that to be very clear to you. If you do the next one, I'm going to have 1 divided by, and I want you to try to change that bottom thing into a fraction. The 
index became the bottom. So that square root became us 7 divided by 2. Last but not least, this thing right here, that 2 out front is just a coefficient. So it's still just going to be out front. The h, though, is going to have a fraction exponent. And that exponent is going to be 4 divided by 3. The index became the bottom. Because the bottom is the index. Krishna Shah has a dance to Let's try some Yeah. Uh, you could, but they wanted it as positive as well. That's why I left it on the bottom. But yeah, you're actually 100% right. You could have made it that way. All right. Now we're going to try adding and subtracting these crazy things. This actually is easier than it looks if you rely on your calculator a bit. So if you look at this question, we have x to the power of 3 over 2 times x. What do we do to our exponents when we're multiplying? Add. You add them. So adding 3 over 2 with 1, because there's an invisible 1 right here, can be hard for some people. That's OK. I understand that. So use your calculator. So in your calculator, you're going to go bracket 3 divided by 2 bracket plus 1. And that's going to give you 2.5. 2.5 is not an acceptable answer because we don't like decimals in this class. So you're going to go math, frac, and the 2.5 is going to change to be 5 over 2. That's your new fraction. So that means this thing combines to be x to the power of 5 over 2. Just let your calculator do the addition and subtraction. If you're good at adding and subtracting fractions, then yeah, feel free. Do it yourself. But if you're not strong at that, understand your own weaknesses and limitations and find ways to either develop it or to support yourself. So if I look at this thing, I have a division question. What do I have to do to my exponents? Subtract them. So I need to go 1 divided by 3 minus 5 divided by 3. Math, frac. Then I'm going to get y to the power of negative 4 over 3. Do we like negative exponents? No. So how can we get rid of that negative? You flip it. So now it's 1 over y to the power of 4 over 3. Do we like fraction exponents? No. So how can we get rid of a fraction exponent? Change it to a radical. So that's 1 over the cube root of y to the 4. I should change this. Don't let the addition and subtraction of fractions throw you off. Your calculator can be that far. Okay, so you get C. How is this fraction going to come in? What do I have to do? Distribute it, and when you distribute it, you have to multiply the exponents. So you're doing one half times two over three in your calculator, and then go math frac, and you should get a to the power of two over six. So one over three? Yeah, you should definitely one over three because two over six is one over three. It's the same thing. I should definitely reduce my frac. Regrets. So if you got 1 over 3 in your calculator, that's right. If you got 2 over 6 and you did in your head like me, you should reduce your fraction. Sorry. We, do we like fraction exponents? No. Nope. So how do we get rid of it? It becomes a cube root. Three more to go and they get.
get a little bit intense. We have D. We have multiplication. When you're doing multiplication, coefficients go with coefficients. So 4 times 3 gives me 12. Letters go with letters. So x to the power of 3 over 4 times x to the power of negative 1 half. What do you have to do with the exponents? You add them. So in your calculator, you're going to go 3 over 4 plus negative 1 over 2. And you're going to get x to the power of 1 over 4. Why wouldn't that be a good enough answer? Because we don't like fraction exponents. So we need to change that thing. The 12 is not a part of that exponent. So the 12 stays on the outside. The other thing, though, changes. All right, E. E is probably the hardest one of all. The reason it's the hardest is the coefficients throw people off on this one. Divide by 25. Numbers can go together. And most people, when they do that, they go, well, I know that 5 and 25 go together because 5 divides into 25 five times. And you're close. Yeah, it's actually 0 0.2. And then you want to math frack that. So in your calculator, if you have coefficients like this, Go 5 divided by 25, hit enter, go math, frac, and you'll find that 5 divided by 25 is actually 1 over 5. So what are you talking about that's finished? Math, frac, frac. Math, frac, yeah. Just constantly turn those things back into fractions. Now, what am I going to do with my exponents on my x's? Subtract them because it's division. So you need to go 3 divided by 5 minus <coughs> negative 3 divided by 5. And if you do that, you should get x to the power of 6 divided by 5. That's not a good enough answer because we don't like fractions, right? We don't like fraction exponents. They don't exist in our world. So we need to change that thing to become the fifth root of x6 divided by 5 still. You'll notice that this 1 is gone. The reason the 1 is no longer written is because do we really need to write 1 times something? No, because 1 times anything is just itself, right? So we don't have to write that 1 again. Give me one minute. So if you're looking at f, we simplify anything inside the brackets we can. Nothing can simplify. Now we look outside the brackets, we notice that we have a negative. What was our trick with negatives on the outside of brackets? You flip everything on the inside. So it becomes y divided by x squared to the power of 1 over 2. The negative exponent is now gone. Now how does that exponent come into the brackets? You distribute it and you multiply it to the other exponent. So it's going to become y to the power of 1 half divided by x. All I did was I multiplied my exponents. Final step, change to radical. So the top becomes the square root of y, the bottom is still just x.
Okay. Find what patient we're going to do today. We're going to rip through this. So we want to write these things as powers and then evaluate. To write these things as powers, we're going to go the opposite direction. When you have this situation right here, where you have a square root and then a square root, do the inside first. So the inside would become 1, 2, 9, 6 to the power of 1. And that's how that thing would change to exponent. The inside part would change to that. This root sign is the big root sign. We haven't dealt with it yet. But the little root sign became a fraction. That make sense? Same as the square root, right? So the index on the little guy right here became the bottom. But this big thing right here is still this exact same big one right here. Now we're going to do it again. So we're going to change this again into a fraction exponent. But when we do that, we're going to use brackets. So we had 1296 to the power of 1 half. But that thing is all to the power of 1 half. Like that. So the big one became this second fraction at the outside of the brackets. <coughs> one half would come in. One half times one half would give you one to the power of four. Sorry, one divided by four, I said to the power of four. So you multiply your exponents because it had to come into the brackets. <coughs> now, if you're clever, you'll notice that that means all we really did was we multiplied the indexes. And then those became the bottom of your fraction. All right, this one. It's just going to come 1 divided by 169 to the power of 1 over 2. Yes, the index became the bottom of the fraction. Mm, yeah, you're right. You, like, normally we would change it, right? Uh, it's just because it's telling us to write it as a power. That's the only reason we're writing it as a fraction exponent. But on like a basic question where you're simplifying, you would, oh, you would change it to a radical. Yeah. This one. If we learned our trick from that last one, what can we do to the indexes? Multiply the indexes. So you'd have 3 times 2. So you have 64 to the power of 1 over 6. You multiply the indexes, and that became the bottom. So 3 times 2. And that 6 became your bottom. Last one. 6 ABC. We want to write all of those in the form AX to the power of N. That's a fancy way of saying write these as powers. Right? That's all they want you to do. Convert that so that it's a power. To do that, we need to change it into an exponent. So the 8x to the power of 5 was all underneath the root sign. So that means it all had to be to the power of 1 over 3. Now what can I do with that exponent? Distribute it. Simplify it. Multiply it in. That means you have 2x to the 5 over 3. I multiply that to each exponent. 8 to the power of 1 over 3 is 2 when you do your calculator. We're going to try this one right here. So the entire inside of that radical now is... Would the following students come to the office, please? Jacob Pong, Aaron Bryanton, 
and Elise Dumont. Jacob Pawn, Eric Bryanton, and Elise Dumont, would you please come to the office? So we're just putting these things all into exponent form, and then we're distributing those exponents in. I have no idea what 900 to the power of 1 half is. Can anybody do that? It's 30. The more you know. So this thing would change to be 30x to the 1 half. And you've converted all of these things into an exponential form, to an exponent form. Sorry. You get them as a power. You. So you're talking about the exponents here on the numbers? In, in my calculator, I go 16 to the power of 1 over 4, and it gives me 2. 